My name is William Bill Owens III, and in this journal I publish stories of those who have encountered supernatural, paranormal, bizarre, and otherwise unexplainable phenomena, benevolent or malevolent or benign, and who feel they can't turn anywhere else but need to be listened to. You may do with this information what you will. Tyler Lee opens the door in a bathrobe. He is disheveled. His hair is untidy, he is unshaven, his clothes are unkempt, and in his right hand he holds a bottle of pills. Wait. He mumbles. Uh, give me a sec. He shuts his eyes and lifts his free hand as if he's trying to remember something. Then he snaps his fingers. Uh, uh, Bill, right? Bill Owens? That'd be me. I forgot you were coming by, man. He yawns and holds the door open and nods his head in the direction of his living room and shuts it behind me. Long night? I guess you could say that. Hey, uh, you want coffee? I got coffee. Uh, sure. Thanks. I follow him into the kitchen, which is filthy beyond reason. The dishes in the sink are stacked higher than the faucet, and the floor is sticky. I can feel this even through my shoes, and on the counter there are no fewer than six Chinese takeout boxes with various amounts of old food still inside. Two full trash bags are tied up by the garbage can, which is also full. As he prepares the drink, he says, Have a seat at the, uh, uh... The counter? Uh, yeah. I pause when I see that seat is obstructed. Where do you want the pile of dirty clothes? He turns around and squints. Uh, that's where I put those. Um, just, just throw them on the table, that's fine. <sighs> I do that, and I take my seat and set up my recorder and press play. A moment later, Tyler turns around with two cups of coffee and hands me one. But while I'm adding in the cream, he stops, and his eyes open up wide, and he puts the other mug down and pats himself all over as if he's lost something important. Oh, what? He says. Uh, where's the, uh, um, uh, the, um... The pills? They're still in your hand. He looks at his hand, and the presence of the bottle startles him. Oh. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Don't mention it. He unscrews the lid and produces two tablets for himself. He stares at those, then shrugs and shakes the bottle enough to get a third. And he downs them all without water and screws the lid back on and puts that on the counter across from me. Then he stops again. You want to, uh, go to the, um, living room? It's probably more comfortable. I'd like that, thanks. I follow him there and take my seat after moving both the pile of clothes and the cat sleeping underneath them to the other end of the couch. It's cluttered, but not revolting in this room. Uh, don't mind Gus, says Tyler. He's a feisty little dude, but he won't hurt you. The cat plops down onto the floor and moves over to the far end of the room and finds a new place on the empty chair there. And he glares at me when he's settled. I ignore the cat and click my pen. So, thanks for having me. He yawns and nods. When he can, he says, <sighs> So you work for, like, some paper or something? I run an independent journal called Tales from the Shadows, and I interview folks like you who have had experiences with the paranormal or unexplained. Oh, right. You, uh, you mentioned that on the, uh, on the phone. So... You said you'd had a run-in with some kind of recurring nightmare, is that what it was? He nods and takes a sip of his coffee and sets the mug down. You know how in scary movies there's like a hallway 
The lights start shutting off at the end of it. They work their way back towards the camera until the whole screen is dark. Sure. Yeah, dreams were a lot like that. Okay. Except it wasn't a hallway. It could be anything. First dream I had that I remember, I was in a car, and man, I was just flying down the road, going like 100, 110, something like that. And the whole time, I was watching this huge hulking shadow in the rear view. No matter how fast I was driving, that thing was always right behind me. Gaining, actually. I can't tell if it's the pills, or the coffee, or the story itself, but Tyler is slowly gaining coherency as he speaks. The shadow. Was there something in it? Didn't need to be. All I knew was, in the dream, if it got me, I was dead. I nod and write that down. How'd you get away? Or did you? I did, and it's, it's weird because the solution, at least in the dream, was obvious. I had to kill myself. Huh. Yeah, and luckily the road was like a mountain road, so there's cliffs everywhere. Came up to a turn, and instead of veering left, I just gunned it. He makes a whooshing sound and sweeps his flat palm through the air a foot above his lap. You drove over the edge. That did the trick. Shadow started following me over the edge, but I hit the ground before it got me. I, I think, anyway. Do one of those jump wake-ups, you know those? Sure, you get scared awake when you fall. Exactly. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night, either. It's like two in the morning, so I was all groggy for work the next day. It pissed me off. Were you concerned at all? During the next day, I mean? Gus, who we've kept awake with our discussion, runs over from the other chair and settles in his lap, and he begins to pat him. You hungry, little dude? Eat yet, huh? Gus looks up at him expectantly. Hang on. He gets up, Gus follows, and heads into the kitchen. A moment later, I hear the sound of cat food sliding out of a bag and hitting plastic. Then he puts it back and takes his seat back on the couch. Uh, sorry, man, what, what was that? Or are you concerned about the dream the next day? He frowns, shakes his head. I don't know. Uh, not really. I figured it was just some dream, right? But then it came back. There's a brief pause. He looks at the floor. Yeah. Came back that night. Same idea, different setup. So not the car. He shakes his head. Second dream I was in this really, really cramped house. Not a small house or anything, but seriously, every room in it was cluttered with shit. Tables, beds, chairs, lamps, and it was dream gravity too, so some of it was like up on the walls and ceiling. I didn't think twice about it at the time, but it made it extra hard to run through. And the shadow followed you. Yeah, it was never more than like a room link behind me, and I'm, you know... I'm scrambling and banging my knee on corners and shit, just trying to get away as fast as I can. But it kept getting closer. I don't remember the order of the rooms, but I remember some of them. One was a kitchen, I remember like, it's weird, like, the ceiling was just a giant fridge. Like, can't, like, can't explain that, but there it was. Whole ceiling was an open fridge and it was freezing in there, like, man, real, like, real cold. There was like a dining room table beneath that, and then there was like a bedroom where there was like this tunnel of uh, uh what do you call those standing dressers? Like the really, like the really nice ones. Armoires? Yeah, yeah. There were a bunch of armoires that were like leaning into each other, and I had to crawl through those. Eventually, there was a balcony, and right before the shadow got me, I just jumped over the edge. And then you woke up. And then I woke up. Yeah. So, I'm assuming at this point you might have become concerned? Similar intense dreams back to back must have been alarming. Honestly, man, at that point, I was just more focused on getting sleep. Started dozing off at my desk, my boss takes me aside, reads me the riot act about professionalism or whatever. I can't remember exactly what he said because all the energy I had left was just... I was just focused on pretending to listen, you know? So, uh, yes sir, and no sir, till he shuts up. Go back to my desk, and like, instantly... He snaps his fingers and startles Gus, who'd been preoccupied with a jingling toy beneath the coffee table. I'm asleep again. Then, through his laughter, while I smile, Tyler says... And holy shit, man, boss comes by and he's all, you fucking serious? 
Lee, you know, get your shit, go home, it happens again, you're done, blah, 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 and I'm like, oh, God, oh, I was so out of it, I'm like, whatever, man, like, wasn't even trying to disrespect the guy, right, but I'm all, whatever, man, and I just got my coat and bag and walk off, whole office was staring at me. Did the dream occur at work? His smile is gone. No. But it happened on the way back home. You fell asleep at the wheel? Couldn't help myself. I was sitting on the traffic of 995 and it was like bumper to bumper. You know back when they were doing that work on the ramp out by, uh, out by the Genos? <laughs> I'm uh, not from around here, actually. Oh, right. Um, well, they were building this on-ramp for another highway that stretched over the road. So the traffic was always really, really bad after work. And I'm sitting there and I'm blasting my music to stay awake, but I couldn't. That was off then and there. Ooh, yikes. And that time, almost immediately, the dream starts. I'm in my car again, bumper to bumper traffic, but here it's like... I don't know. The road is easily six lanes wide, filled with cars as far as the eye can see, you know? They were all empty. Some of the doors were open, some of the hazards were on. Like it was some kind of apocalypse and everyone got stuck on the road and just abandoned their cars. And the shadow was coming up from behind you? Turn around, there it is. Whole countryside is getting eaten up by it. So I try to run, but the other cars are parked so close that I can't open the door all the way. So I'm like, shit, decide to crawl out of the sunroof. And as I'm squeezing out of that, the car behind me starts honking. And I'm like, I thought everyone was gone, you know? So I turn around and it's empty, but it's still honking. Then other cars join in, and the whole, and soon the whole damn road is honking like crazy. And the shadow is probably, I don't know, two or three car lengths behind me. Honking gets louder and louder, and as the shadow gets me, right on my forearm. He holds up his left arm and moves the bathrobe sleeve down to the elbow to reveal a lacing network of bizarre blackened veins that look profoundly diseased. I wake up. Traffic's lit up and everyone's honking away at me for holding up the line. <sighs> Good god. So, if it gets you in the dream... Real life too, yeah. I didn't notice till I got home. Adrenaline wore off and there was just this excruciating pain, man. I mean, I couldn't even describe it. I looked at my arm and saw this. Black veins. And it was spreading. Did you call 911? Not at first. He wipes his nose with the back of his hand. Leans back, stretches his arms across the back of the couch. Tried to ignore it. I took some ibuprofen, which helped. And I started doing research on it. Googled, like, black shadow following me in dreams. Got a bunch of nonsense. Googled, um, dream shadow, hurts, real life, something like that. I can't remember. But I got a bunch of nonsense there, too. Finally found this old forum where someone mentions what they called the dream demon. Malthus, or Malthrung, or something, I can't remember. Anyway, manifests as a shadow in your dream, wants to bring you to its realm. Scary shit. He sips from his coffee and puts it down. Any solution? He nods and keeps his eyes on the ground. Yep. Had to go to its realm. I look up from my pad. You had to... Let it take you? I thought- Nah, man. If it took me, I'm fucked, right? But if I found a way inside myself and beat it- a And it, what? Dies? Or leaves you alone? Couldn't tell you. Definitely the second one. I don't know what happens to it. Okay. Gus comes back in the room with a full belly and begins playing with a toy beneath the table. You full, buddy? <laughs> Tyler says- He's looking under the table, smiles, and looks back up. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, the pain's coming back, right? Look at my arm, the whole thing is turning black. Running up the veins to the heart. I managed to call 911, and then, and I don't know if it was the shadow or the panic, I pass out. I'm guessing this thing isn't restricted to dreams. He shakes his head. Got stronger this time. Maybe it's because it already had me, I don't know. He starts to rock back and forth a bit, looking at the ground, wide-eyed, lost in thought. Where were you this time? He looks up. Huh? In this 
dream or whatever it was. Some field at night, man. Wasn't even fair, you know? Wasn't fair. There was nowhere to go, nowhere to run or hide, nowhere to... Not like you could have hidden anyway, right? I mean, yeah, I, I guess not, but there was no way to escape this time. The, the other dreams had some way back. Edge of the cliff, railing, honking, whatever. This one. This one just had me in a field. Tall grass or weeds or something. And it. Trees at the edge of the field, like way, way off. And a light. A light? He nods and sips his coffee. I don't know how I knew this, man, but that light, like, way out there in the trees, it was always there. In every dream I had, I remember seeing it. In the car, like, when I flew over the cliff, it was there, way out in the distance, like this pillar of light. In the house, it was coming in from underneath a door in a room I didn't go into. And on the highway, it was at the end of the road. I don't know how far down. Any idea what it was? Yeah, man. <sighs> he sniffs. Wipes his hand again, plays with Gus with his foot. It was the door to the Shadow's world. Believe that? So even if the Shadow was attacking you, something about the way the dream was constructed made it like a game. There was a way to win. Thought the same thing myself. Got the impression it was giving me like a sporting chance or whatever. Right. So anyway, there I am, just sprinting through the field towards the light. Shadow's right on my ass, man. Like, right back there. Felt like some kind of shiver about to run down your spine. Finally make it to the light, and by the time I do, I mean... I mean, like, there's a literal freaking doorway in the ground. Like, right there. Like a cellar door or something. Didn't hesitate, I throw it open, jump in, go down the stairs. It was the only way out. He stops. Gus leaps up into his lap and purrs. He pats him absent-mindedly. Seems to be getting some small comfort from his presence. Then he continues. I don't know. I was somewhere else entirely. I give him a moment. Then I ask softly. What did this new place look like? Was it recognizable or... Uh, in a way. <laughs> he scratches the cat behind the ears. It looked like my neighborhood as a kid. Cul-de-sac was there, basketball hoop at the end of the driveway, Eric's bike was lying on its side in the yard, which it always was. His parents hated that. They always yelled at him to put it up in the garage, and he would, and he'd just do it again next time. He got a kick out of that. <laughs> he laughs a bit, sniffs. Uh, oh, anyway, it's like, it's like I'm that kid again. I was actually... I looked down, I'm like, what, 12... 11 or 12, something like that. And I'm walking home, and just, everything's dark. It's daytime, but everything's like black. There are these huge freaking vines covering everything, shooting up and through the road, the yard, everywhere. Trees are dead, mailbox was like broken. And like I said, man, it was dark. I look up and there's a huge freaking storm cloud in the sky. Center of it is right over the middle of the cul-de-sac. Like the, uh, swirling, empty hole in the middle of it. The, uh... The eye? Like, of a hurricane? Yeah. Yeah, the eye. Except it's not, like, clear sky. You can see through it. It's just... It's, it's just this red energy. It's light. And I'm looking up, and from the eye comes this inky, freaking, tendrily black shit. Right? Starts crawling out like some kind of, like, alien ooze or something. And I knew, man, I knew it was the shadow. It didn't like that I was here. So I'm like, fuck that. And I start running to my old house. Threw open the door and I realized everything is just... Just... Frozen. My dad, the way he was when I was a kid, mid-40s or whatever, sitting like a fucking statue on the couch. Static on the screen, mom's walking down the stairs, but, like, she ain't moving at all. Everything except me is frozen, dude. Just you and the shadow. Just me and the shadow, yeah. All the lights were off since it was daytime. Dad was a huge power bill Nazi, bro. Like, always throwing a fit if you turned the AC on and it wasn't at least, like, 85 degrees or whatever. So the lights were off, and I can only see because of what tiny amount of light there was coming from the outside. Then that goes out, and I'm like, 
shimmying up the stairs, trying not to touch my mom, and it's just, and it's just blackness, dude. I stop, I look out the windows, you know, and the shadow's just wrapping itself around the house. I'm watching it in the kitchen, and then I hear my dad. He gulps, rubs the back of his neck. I get the impression the upcoming memory is particularly disturbing. He goes, Tyler, you left the door open, son. Just like that, like, nice and polite. And that wasn't him, you know? I always did that as a kid, swear to God. I'd just run in and leave the door wide open. Dad would lose his shit, say, Tyler, goddammit, you're wasting AC, and slam it and shout he'd break my video games if I did it again. We laugh later about it, but it really pissed him off. But this time he's all, Tyler, you left the door open, son. Come on back down and shut it. And I turn and look, and he was right. The door was wide open. Hadn't done it since I was like 15, 16, I don't know. And the shadow had crawled on through, and it had... Oh, fuck, man. It had its freaking tentacle or whatever just wrapped around my dad's head. Turned at this broken, unnatural angle. Eyes dead, mouth just hanging open, man. Just like swinging by the jaw. He imitates the look, rolls his eyes back, hangs his mouth open, dumb and lifeless. It might have been amusing in another context. And I just... I fucking booked it, dude. I ran up the stairs, heard this slimy, slithering freaking sound from the bottom floor. And it was coming up the stairs, and right as I reached the top, I felt something grab my ankle, and I just went down hard, like... Like, clipped my chin on the floor. Even in the dream, that hurt like hell, dude. I bit my tongue. He opens his mouth, extends his tongue. There's the faintest scar on the side of it. It's healed now for the most part, but it's noticeable if you know where to look. See that? Anyway, I turn around, and it's got my mom. Just knocked her on her back on the stairs and, like, took her arm and cracked it back. He tries to imitate the position, but it's obvious he can't. Just broke it. Snap. Made it reach directly up and back and grab me by the ankle. Fucking searing pain, man. Foot went numb and I could just feel that stuff crawling its way up my leg. Same with my arm. But I got out, crying and screaming like some scared kid. But I got out. Minute to my room, slammed the door. He's trembling visibly. Shaking. Gus, standing up and with his fur on end, appears concerned for his owner. Or afraid for himself, it, it's hard to tell. Room was the same as it was when I left it, he says at last. Had that Ninja Turtles poster on my wall, Legos, G.I. Joes, just everywhere, man. But like everything else, it was dark and just... It was filthy. It was just... Just so gross, dude. Vines everywhere and this weird goo dripping from those and my bed in the middle. I could see it myself. Can you, can you believe that? Here I am staring down at myself. Me, as a kid. I don't know how that makes sense. Anyway, I, I was sleeping and having some sort of nightmare. Kicking and thrashing and rolling over. Looked like I was sick or scared, but couldn't wake up for the life of me. Like some kind of astral projection within a dream. It's fascinating. He snorts. For you, maybe. I look up, and there's this thing crouched to the end of the bed. I don't know how to explain it. My, my head was right up against the headboard, but this thing was behind me anyway. Like, in the same space as the wall. Like, they, like they were existing on top of each other in different dimensions. What did this thing look like? Just this dark, crooked-looking bastard, right? And he's just covered in the shadow, like like it was thicker around him than it had ever been. Got his hands or claws, whatever, near other me's temples, like directing the nightmare, and he's looking up at me, just scowling. Never seen anything so full of hate in my life. It didn't want me dead, it's like, I don't know, it wanted to keep me alive and torture me. That kind of hate. The demon. He nods. Picks up Gus and pets him. This helps him relax a bit, it seems. Yeah. Stepped out from the bed, looked me up and down, snarled and pounced, and then... He looks at the floor. The cat meows. And then? 
Then they brought me back. I shifted in my seat. What? Who? EMTs. Said I was seizing on the floor. Said I bit my tongue. Said I smashed my ankle against the edge of the couch leg. I tried to ask about the black shit in my veins, but I couldn't, like... I couldn't form the words, you know? My head hurt so fucking bad, man. Vision swam. I felt lightheaded. They took me to the hospital after that. I spent the night, I think. There's silence for a bit. Gus climbs into Tyler's lap, gets pet. I chew on my pen. Finally, I break that silence. Did the nightmares come back? He looks up at me, then back down at the cat. Not for some time, he says. Eventually, I told him about the nightmares. They shoot me over to the psych ward or some shit. I get hooked up with all sorts of medicine. You know, dream killers. Slept real soundly for a long while. Forgot all about it. Then last week, had a dream. Sitting at work alone, probably midnight, maybe a bit later. Had the lights on, but I realized I could only see like 20, 30 feet down the hallway. Think, you know, that's weird. Wonder what's going on with that. So I step out of my cubicle and walk towards it. That's when I hear footsteps. Sprinting, pounding, like angry footsteps coming towards me from inside the shadow. Scared me so bad I snapped awake. Now every time I sleep, it's back. Gus plops off the couch and wanders off into the darkness of the hallway. That darkness is thick and unyielding in there. Perhaps Tyler picked up his father's anxiety over power bills, perhaps not. The medicine, I say. That what that is? I nod towards the bottle of pills. He picks it up, rattles it a bit. It's nearly empty. Shakes his head. Nah, medicine stopped working a while back. Or maybe I got used to it, I don't know. These are amphetamine salts. Like Adderall? Instant release, yeah. Went to another doctor, spun up some bullwinder about, I don't know, can't focus at work, blah blah blah. Keeps me awake. How long since you've slept? He looks up, squints out the window at the setting sun. Uh, day and a half? Two days? Something like that? Sometimes I nod off for a few minutes. Doesn't take it long to come for me. It's hungry, Bill. I can feel that somehow. It's real hungry. Maybe if you know the cause of it, you could... He shakes his head. Done my research, my friend. No one knows the rhyme or reason. Latches on till you're gone. I find I have little to say. I look at the floor. But it's okay. I've come to terms with it, you know? I look back up and furrow my brow. You're just gonna let it take you? He shakes his head. No. I'm not gonna give it a chance. Tyler- It's okay, Bill. If I'm going either way, I'm doing it on my terms. You know I'll have to call the police. Do it. I reach for my phone. By the time they get here, I'll be gone. He said. I paced the living room with that phone to my ear. Tried to ignore him. But I'm not giving that fucking thing the satisfaction. There's a pause. I just... I just wanted to get all this off my chest before I went. So... Thank you. He stood up and began walking down the hall. I made for his arm to stop him, but he thrashed and got free. Hello, 911? I'd like to report a- <laughs> Then there was a deafening bang. And then there was silence. Hello? Sir, are you okay? There was a beat. I don't believe I am, no. The police arrived some 15 minutes after that. Did their search, asked their questions. Then came the ambulance, the coroner, 
and I was ushered out of the house. I then turned the tape over to the investigators, and went home and I wrote this account. At the very least, I like to imagine that Tyler Lee deprived the dream demon of even the smallest hint of satisfaction. And if anyone out there has information regarding this entity, please contact me on my website. <laughs>